Hello guys and welcome to CG Nexus. Today I'm here with a tutorial showing you the workflow I use for creating details on this Viking sword. Before I start I'd like to talk a little about the workflow. First I'm going to edit my image in paint.net, I'm going to import the image into Inkscape and convert it into a vector image and then I'll jump right into Blender. You'll have links for everything in the description below. Import the image into paint.net, select the magic wand tool, select the black border, change the threshold, then delete the border. Save the image afterwards. Import the edited image into Inkscape, then center it. In the top menu, go to Path, Trace Bitmap, change the threshold to 0.7 and the Spreckles value to 110. Click on Update, then OK. Next, save your vector image. Import the vector image into Blender and remove the default material. Next, convert the pattern to a 3D mesh. Go into Edit Mode, select everything and press F. Now, move the parts around to create your final pattern. When finished, select everything and extrude it on the Z-axis. This is how the end result should look like. Next, select the pommel, go into Edit Mode and select the loop cut that will be used as the curve for the pattern. Press Shift D to duplicate, then P and choose selection. Exit Edit Mode and place the loop cut in the appropriate area. Go into Edit Mode and select Proportional Editing to make the loop go around the mesh properly. In Object Mode, go to Object, Convert to and convert the mesh to a curve. In Edit Mode, select everything, go to Curve, set Spline Type and select Bezier. Next, go to Control Points, set Handle Type and select Automatic. Do this again, this time selecting Aligned instead. Right click and select Decimate Curve. From the panel in the lower left corner, change the value to 0.1. With the pattern selected, add a curve modifier and select the created curve as the curve object. Move the pattern into the correct position. Next, select the curve, go into Edit Mode, select each handle and change the mean radius to 1. Change the tilt value for each handle until the pattern follows the curvature of the object. Make sure the pattern is overlapping the pommel properly. Select the pommel and add the boolean modifier to it. Use the fast solver and choose the pattern as the boolean object. You can change the pattern visibility in wireframe for a better view of the result. Slightly move the pattern until you get better results. Next, select the pommel and create a duplicate and make sure to clean the boolean modifier. Now select the original pommel and apply the boolean modifier. Select the duplicate pommel and go to edit mode. Make sure you have the face selection mode enabled. Go back to object mode and select the original pommel. Now into edit mode you should see the boolean result selected. With that press ctrl and minus on the number pad to reduce the selection. Select any stray areas that remain unselected then go to object data properties, add a new vertex group then hit assign. Next go to normals and enable auto smooth. With the pommel selected add a data transfer modifier as the source select the duplicated pommel. Next check the face corner data and select custom normals from the drop down tab. Change the mapping type to nearest face interpolated and from the vertex group select the vertex group that you created then invert it. This is the result if you forgot to delete the boolean modifier on the pommel duplicate and this is the final result. If there are any other dark areas add them to the vertex group. Before I end this video I'd like to talk about the other details I made. All the details follow the same workflow. Edit image into paint.net, use Inkscape to convert it to a vector image and finally import it into Blender. For the details sticking out of the mesh I used a shrink wrap modifier with the wrap method set to project and for the thickness I used a solidify modifier. Also for moving the pommel add an empty and pair both pommels to the empty. Make sure to turn off viewport visibility for the data transfer modifier. Alright, thank you guys for watching and see you next time.